My name is Caroline Taylor. I'm a veterinary demonstrator for Celtic SMR, and I'm here today to talk to you about the health and safety aspects of using a therapeutic laser in the treatment of the patients, both in the clinic and in equine practice. Uh, so obviously we can control the area much more easily within the small animal clinic um, because we've, um, we can put um, safety measures in place, we can shut the doors and those sorts of things. Uh, but I'll also talk about how that relates to how we use laser um, out and about in a more mobile practice if we're treating horses on different yards. So today, um, health and safety um, using MLS class four laser therapy. Um, so in the images you'll see, uh, we'll be using the MVET laser. This also is relevant to any users using the VET blue or the VET orange lasers that we also have available. So first of all, are there contraindications for our patients uh, using, is there any uh, circumstances that we shouldn't be using uh, veterinary laser for? And um, as you know, there will be a certain number of contraindications. And that is the case if we've got any sort of active bleeding, if there's any um, types of uh, neoplasia, any cancer cells there, for both of those reasons, because the laser causes an increase in microvasculation and micro vascularization um, there's a risk of those um, getting worse if uh, there's any um, of those uh, present we also need to be really careful if we have pregnant patients uh, because any laser the um, uh, laser can penetrate up to uh, four centimeters and just like it has effects on growth plates and things like that um, it could actually affect um, the growing uh, um, uh, in utero, uh, the growing fetuses. So something to avoid there. If our patient has any pacemakers, in case uh, there is any interference there, and also on any hormonal tissue. Um, so the thyroid gland, the ovaries, the testicles, we want to avoid using veterinary laser um, on any of those uh, uh, in case there is issues with increased uh, microvascularization, which then leads to an increase in, in those hormones. Um, and also growth plates, it's important because that can affect um, the activity of uh, those growth plates you want to avoid uh, treating. So particularly if there's a, if you're treating a wound in a young animal, particularly um, like a yearling, we need to be just careful of and mindful of where those growth plates might be. So other than that, pretty much any form of inflammation or pain, uh, we can use laser to reduce those signs of uh, pain, swelling um, and inflammation. So optical radiation risks, we do need to be aware of these when we are using um, uh, veterinary laser uh, within our practice. Optical radiation um, inhibited by lasers does have the potential to damage both the eyes and the skin of patients, clients and equipment users. Um, and there is also a risk of fires or explosions from those lasers igniting gases or fabrics. So in reference to the eye, this is the particular area that we need to be very careful of both for patients, clients and ourselves. Um, the eye is particularly susceptible to damage from optical radiation if because it can focus onto the retina through the lens and that can be significant to cause local heating. Um, it can almost damage both the pigment epithelium and the adjacent light sensitive rods and cones resulting in temporary or permanent vision loss. So it's really important that we at all times have safety glasses, which I will show you shortly. Skin and tissue damage, there is a potential with some class four lasers that it can cause burns. Skin should be protected um, by light absorbing or light scattering materials um, of any area that isn't um, uh, being treated. Uh, so that regular clothing is absolutely fine. Being aware though that the MLS laser uniquely within the market um, doesn't have this risk of thermal damage. 
that it's a non-thermal laser in terms of tissue burns. And so the risk of tissue damage is eliminated when we're using MLS um, uh, and ACER produced devices um, because they're using an, a nanopulse of the higher levels of lasers. So usually it does apply to class four lasers, but not in the case of the MLS laser. There is still a risk of fire. So we need to be careful the MLS device is, is not suitable for the use of, um, in the presence of flammable anesthetic mixture with air or oxygen or nitrous oxide, which is rarely used nitrous oxide now in first uh, practice. Currently, there are no official guidelines uh, for the use of laser within the veterinary industry, but we do re recommend referring to the following laser safety documents for your guidance when you are um, producing your health and safety certificate for the use of laser in practice. That's both the um, Health and Safety Executive HSE guidance for employers on control of AOR 2010 and the Emma HRA guidance document on, on laser, uh, which um, uh, it's uh, for lasers, intense light source systems and LEDs. Risk management, you can see at the side here, we have our laser safety sheet that we give to um, every uh, user who purchases our um, systems. And that's a, a uh, it's double sided so there is more than the, what's listed here um, and that goes through what is needed um, uh, and to manage the risks associated uh, with using laser in veterinary practice. Um, risk management, harmful laser radiation can be prevented when laser operators and support staff follow basic protocols. As with all therapeutic procedures, some element of risk is present. Um, through either negligence or by accident. And we can reduce both of these things by having a protocol that we use uh, for anyone using the laser in practice. And these hazards are very easily presented or reduced uh, with the safety protocols for each application. So number one, eye protection. Class four lasers that emit both visible and invisible radiation. So they should never, uh, we should never direct the laser directly into the eyes or direct the laser beam at anything other than the area to be treated. And protective eyewear must be worn at all times. The protective eyewear provided with your laser is manufactured specifically for the wavelengths emitted by the laser. So you shouldn't use different safety glasses from different manufacturers uh, for different lasers. Um, because it might not have the appropriate level of protection. There's usually a note in your the glasses manufacturer to say what uh, uh, specification uh, and, and which wavelengths it will protect the user for. It should be used by both the administrator of the laser, which is usually the vet, the physio, or the veterinary nurse, and also any other individuals in the room uh, there is available uh, safety goggles for dogs and for cats, um, not as I'm aware for horses, but there are some other uh, safety devices you can use for horses to protect an eye, um, particularly if you are treating around the head. Uh, but for the patient, most of the time, if you draw the, the head away from the area to be treated, that is sufficient because you're going to be using the direct laser beam directly over the area to be treated. You can clean them with mild soapy water. You don't need any special um, cleaners uh, to use. And actually, if you do use special cleaners, you do have to be aware um, that this might damage uh, this surface of protection of the eyewear. Um, you shouldn't remove the safety goggles during administration of the laser until it's turned off or switched off. And you should also um, tell anyone else who's in the room to do the same. Eye protection should be used in conjunction with written procedural controls. In the first instance, the risk of contact with eyes should be um, minimised. Reflective surfaces is something that we don't always think about um, because uh, we're used to having uh, quite a number of potentially reflective surfaces within the clinic, um, both uh, any rings or metal tables or trolleys that we might be using. 
um, to obviously easily clean, um, to be um, sterilized. Um, direct and indirect contact with the laser beam or scattered diffuse laser light from any reflective surfaces can cause serious irreparable corneal or retinal damage or even possible blindness. So it is really important to bear in mind um, that reflective surfaces can be um, a big source of uh, this scattered and diffuse laser light. Um, so if it's not practical to remove those items from the room that you're using, you want to cover them at the reflective surface with an opaque material. A cotton drape is absolutely fine. A towel uh, or even a rug over um, uh, metal uh, hay nets, uh, hay areas if, if you are in a stable environment is absolutely fine. Um, patients should not be treated within or nearby a metal kennel um, because this is obviously a really um, area. Just like with x-ray, um, usually you'll have that directed down and there'll be an area uh, that we know is in the direct beam. With the laser, because it's a handheld device, there is more potential for scatter. Um, so yeah, avoiding those areas uh, and moving a patient away from those surfaces is um, essential. And that's where we think about the controlled room um, because um, it's advisable to perform all treatments in a designated area uh, within the practice, usually with a lockable um, entrance so that anyone coming in or coming out of that entrance will um, know uh, that there is a potential hazardous um, event going on beyond the door. Um, labels uh, with caution, controlled area, um, laser in use uh, should be easily um, seen uh, for anyone outside the door. Uh, or no unauthorized access, knock and wait, uh, laser IPL eyewear must be worn. All these warning signs are um, uh, highly recommended. Um, at both uh, the laser treatment room entrances, um, we can provide those, um, Celtic SMR can provide those if you don't have them already. Um, any windows, because there is a potential for reflection, should be protected with blocking blinds. Um, surface, reflective surfaces, as we discussed, should be removed or covered completely. Um, and also there should be an appropriate fire extinguisher present just in case of any fire risk. So slightly different when we're treating horses uh, because we have a little bit less control over um, the area uh, that we're treating. Although many yards now will have uh, somewhere suitable um, for treatments uh, for a variety of different uh, practitioners, whether that's an equidental technician, um, they often have rubber matting, so it's not a concrete floor. Um, so it, the area is much easier to sterilize um, and there'll be less um, issues with um, uh, metal uh, containers. So the, uh, we should really think rather than having a room, we should think about a controlled area um, the MLS laser has a uh, 15 meter ocular hazard zone. So anyone who hasn't got any laser safety glasses should be at least 15 meters uh, from the laser device. It's advisable to have all treatments performed in that designated area, whether that be a stable or a treatment room. And it should still have the following features if possible. Um, access should be controlled with a lockable entrance. There should be warning signs displayed outside that laser treatment area, um, conforming with uh, the, the um, laser safety standard as discussed. Windows again should be protected by blocking blinds and reflective surfaces should be removed or covered appropriately. And there should be, you should um, bring a fire extinguisher um, uh, just in case of any issues and any electrical hazard really within you know an area that could have um, straw or hay or potentially flammable materials um, that should be something that you do as a routine in any case uh, particularly something you know just like you would if if uh, with clipping uh, because of the heat present and that sort of thing 
So a quick checklist for you to uh, run things uh, through as a, a final checklist. Uh, we recommend having a checklist for the laser operator, which is included on our laser safety sheet. Appropriate warning signs should be posted. Access to laser and treatment areas should be secure and controlled. You should visibly inspect and clean all optical connectors for dirt, debris, um, and anything else, any damage uh, that might be a potential fire risk. You should visibly inspect and clean all safety goggles on a regular basis. Safety goggles should be available for all people involved in using and being present within the laser treatment room. Extra safety goggles could be placed outside that room in case someone needs to come in. Um, that can be useful if uh, you don't have a designated area um, that you use. Um, so that uh, if someone does have to come in as essential, then um, that that will be uh, they'll be protected. Sources of potential laser beam reflection and scatter should be controlled. A treatment protocol should be established for every patient, and there should be laser injury management protocol in place um, if there was any issues. Laser's local rules for safe working are with the laser are provided and then approved by a laser protection advisor. Laser protection advisor and LPA, it is strongly advised that you appoint a certified laser protection advisor. We will work closely with the IRS who do provide a virtual service so you can share your laser protocol that you use so you can be compliant with the health and safety regulations. Within the veterinary industry, this is a recommendation rather than an essential, but within the healthcare side, this is already becoming um, essential. So be prepared. Um, what they can help advise you on is local rules, room planning and controlled areas, um, make sure your eye protection is appropriate, laser safety audits, laser safety training, and any adverse incident procedures. What to do next in your practice? Um, if you don't already, uh, you should appoint a laser protection officer within your team. Um, the LPO will work hand in hand with the LPA, uh, the laser protection advisor, and they would be responsible for creating and ensuring that a safety checklist and protocols are being followed and that everyone uh, within the team has appropriate training and is safe in the use of that equipment. Um, that they only train personnel using the equipment. Passport protection is recommended. Um, on the use of the laser. So um, the, uh, both the Envet and the VetBlue do have, uh, it is possible to change that password so that no one else can use and access that equipment. Um, and this can be a really good step in ensuring safety. Read, sign and date your laser safety sheet and return it to your um, uh, account manager. Um, uh, and uh, so that you have this for um, any inspections that uh, come to the clinic. And um, if you do um, have already purchased um, a laser, I, we do strongly recommend that you consider appointing an LPA um, because that can help support you with your laser safety protocols because um, preventing accident and injury is much more important um, uh, than... Um, waiting until uh, you've had any incident. So I hope this has been helpful for you to streamline your safety protocols around the use of veterinary laser within your practice. If you do have any further questions, then you can contact us on sales at keltgesmr.co.uk. We will be running regular, um, whether it's safety updates or other updates, um, here uh, within the laser group um, and we're hoping that we can then um, have those accessible in the future as well um, so that you can update any new staff members um, and share this video for them um, so that they uh, know that they'll be up to date uh, with their protocols. 
thank you very much for joining me today and um, I look forward to visiting you whether that's in practice or at one of the veterinary conferences um, to share more hear more about your cases that you've helped uh, with veterinary laser all right thank you see you soon